Hello and welcome to Can You Hear Me at the Back, the podcast about all things voice and communication. Let's talk about AAE. Okay. So, <laughs> um, AAE is African American English. It's gone through so many different names though. I was listening to Let's Con Valley. Mm-hmm. Ugh, love him. Love him. Oh, <laughs> He's so my many. favorite. Um, he does a really good one. If you if you're ever interested, he did a really good thing on AAE. Um, well, they and... were talking about that originally it was called Ebonics. Yes. And then it was like not Ebonics, and it then it became vernacular. African American vernacular yeah. English. Yeah. Then it became Ebonics again. Yeah. Then it became African American English, mm-hmm. and then it went back to Ebonics for like six months, and then it came mm-hmm. back again mm-hmm. as AAE, and then yeah. everyone's like, no, 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 we just call it. AAE. Yeah. But it, and you know it's really interesting. I think if you look at the like how we were na- like how we talk about ourselves as people, mm-hmm. so we um. But, um, we were slaves, then we were African slaves, and then um, there we were colored people, and then mm. we were black folk, mm. and then black we folk. were, yeah, which my grandmother still uses, folk. Folk. Black, black folk, and I'm like, okay, wow. um, and there's colored folk as well, um, and then there, and then we were, um, there are all kinds of names, and then there was African American that came about with the movement and, and things like that, and I think you, if you talk to, and then some people just say I'm black. Like some, mm. so I think it changes too, um, with how people are identifying themselves within the yeah. culture and within the political landscape of America. So does the language, which I think is really cool. Um, but mm. I call it, I in my personal life, I've always said that I, um, I am black, but I'm African American because I'm still American, mm-hmm. but. I identify as being black because that's something different to me because there are lots of black people in the world, Mm -hmm. but I hail from the black people who are African American. (laughs) It's what I say. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, But other people, like, there there are a whole bunch of things. So I speak African American English um, in my house. Um, with like my cousins, definitely with my sister. And even within that, it's a smaller, smaller thing because it's New York, African American English, which is right. different from, um, and I always get upset when people do this in plays because they're like, oh, we just need an African American English. It's like, yeah, but from what state, <laughs> what city, mm-hmm. what time period? You need to be really specific about time period because it changes the way my grandmother speaks, not the way that I speak. Um, even and not even in it. terms of slang, right? No, Just literally yeah. in terms of, of the use of language. Yeah, yeah. like my grandmother, um, uh, my grandmother is from Virginia, um, and like like Boondocks, Virginia, like <laughs> <laughs> um, the, like the country, and um, and and sometimes she won't even say. Um, like she'll invert the sentences, so she'll so she so if I I would be like oh yeah last night um I did this that and the third and she's like this that and the third I did last night like that's how it would go yeah, yeah. um and there are other kinds of weird things that she does as well but that I mean that differentiates us within that mm. whole variety of an accent which I think is really I think it's cool mm. um but then yeah but I so I've got my own African American English. Um, and then even sometimes within pockets of New York, they're different. Like people from the Bronx speak a little bit differently from people in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. Um, and it changes with class. Like, are you code switching within the class as well? Mm-hmm. Um, are you code switching within the state? Are you code switching within the region of the country? I cannot, um, I have a very hard time, um, being understood in the South, <laughs> Because right. that is a very is that is a completely different uh, that's a completely different accent as well, and we might understand what we're talking about, but mm. we're not we're not using the same code. Ooh. So therefore, you don't necessarily understand. You could use the same phrase, but it could mean something different. It could potentially, yeah. So on uh, Let's Go Valley. The other day, <laughs> the, yeah. the other day, it's literally two years ago. They recorded it, but I listened to it the other day. Um, they were talking about um, like the difference between bean, uh, as, as in oh ben. I've been done that. I've been done that, or yeah. she'd been married. She'd yeah. been talking, mm-hmm. um, or she done talking, mm-hmm. uh, or she is talking. Yeah. So she is talking is different from she been talking. Yeah. 
um, and she done talking yeah. is very different. Yeah. Now, as an as a kind of non African American English speaker, mm -hmm. I go. So you were, and you did, <laughs> and you have finished. <laughs> Right, which is not what it and means. You have finished. <laughs> you have finished. You, yeah. You've done. You've finished. Yeah. Uh, you have been, as in, you were in the past, and you mm -hmm. now no longer are. Yeah. And you, you were like, yeah. or, or you are currently. You is talking. You <laughs> is like, and then, and then I was listening to this podcast, thinking, well, that's clear, isn't it? And then that doesn't mean any of those things. No, no, it doesn't. My favorite though is what's. Um, is Finn like you like you Finn to do something about it? Finn. Finn. I, I think it. I think it's spelled F I N. <laughs> I believe. Um, some people do it. Some people do it in the. I believe from my student study. Um, uh, Finn. I always thought of it as kind of being like a, you. You like. You're inclined to, <laughs> in a way. Um, like you. Um, like you. Like you Finn to get. Oh gosh, I can't do it when I have to do it spontaneously. It's weird and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what, what was um like you um, uh, like you you like you've been to do something. You've been to get you you've been to get like you like you're you you're inclined in the, to in do the mood it. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I always kind of I always kind of think about like you about to, kind mm. of. But even that's different. Like it's a different level of it. I did a whole thing. In, uni um, in university about, because um, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, um, about endearment terms. So those uh. are the terms that you use um, with a loved one. Um, and in African-American English, there's a term called um, wifey, which, which actually when I came to the UK mm -hmm. is like a missus. And I just, I had to figure this out because I was talking to my plumber, who's amazing, but he's quite... Um, He's from like South London, New. It was great, um, and we were having this conversation. But he called what I would what I would understand as a baby mama his missus, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I was very confused because he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we're not together anymore." And I was like, "I was like, oh, so you're not married, but we're using the word missus to mean somebody who's yeah. in that status in your life, but not legally connected to you." Mm -hmm. And it's the same. Like you can have a wifey that's that somebody that like. You're kind of booed up, like that, like you're serious about her. You yeah. Know what I mean, like you're like kinda real serious, up. like yeah. yeah, like you you're like really serious about this person, um, but you're not married. Yeah. Like you're not like it's not your wife, but like that is wifey material. People say. Uh -huh. I mean, like you could you could be married to this person, or you could have a shorty, which is just like our you know a person you can have, <laughs> you can a have <laughs> just a little person. Um, back in the day, you could have a boo. I don't think people still use that. That was the usher. Do they use bay instead, or is that a bit too? I don't mainstream? really know. I feel like that's too. Um, I I feel like that's gone other places. Mm. I feel like that's no longer. Mm. Our, lots of people take our language. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that. Like, I, tell me about just it. Just like you're. You have just <laughs> over here. I know, right? I, I do say slap a lot. <laughs> but is that is that? But it's. Re I find it really fascinating because, um, the use of language is kind of the same in lots of contexts. Mm -hmm. So insofar as you're using the same word, it just starts to mean something different. Yeah. Skint. I use skint. Do you use skint? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Okay, because I, I um, um, a friend of mine, I was, I was messaging, and I sometimes I, I forget that I'm not in New York and my friends are not New Yorkers um, and that they're not black. <laughs> you know what? Um, so I'll be messaging, and I said, um, and we were talking about how broke we are. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm skint. And she just wrote question marks. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, I don't. I don't have any money. <laughs> it's like lint, because it's like... It was this someone English? Yeah. Oh, that's really weird. I know, because it's, it, it's an English thing. It's an English it? word, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like it's an old, 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 it's old English word. Yeah, I think Like a skin flint. Or, no, oh. skin, no, skin. Well, a skin flint would, no. Like a skin flint would be mean, and I don't know why I always have that association. That's probably nonsense. <laughs> Maybe it's because it just rhymes, skin flint. Out. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I always thought like I, like skin. But I also use um, as this is a super New York thing. Mad for everything. Like I'm mad angry. Or, like I'm mad tired. I do that with my sister. <laughs> it was like, yo, Lex, I came home and I was just like mad tired. <laughs> so I took a nap. Who says mad? Good. Oh, um, Amy Schumer. Yeah. And she's maybe. from Long Island, right? Maybe. So she's like, 
Yeah. I mean, not from the city, sure. She's from outside <laughs> the apple, as uh, uh, as we started in our first episode speaking about. Yeah, that, yeah, the Nazi and But she has that, you know, she does that. She's like, and what's interesting is when people then, I feel like their AAE kind of bleeds into, uh, sort of mushes itself into um, intimate situations. Mm -hmm. So when people want to express um, sort of, uh, amorous feelings or lust or whatever it might be they tend to use like a shorty or a boo or a you know or a whatever yeah. because it seems to be more informal and more affectionate cute and there's cuteness <laughs> yeah. to it but there's also like warmth and there's feeling and emotion attached to it mm. as opposed to it being a sort of label it's kind of, it's it's connected to a feeling rather than a thought in yeah. a sense yeah, and a Not concept but... too. Yeah, yeah. Like, which I really like, and to like bring it back around um, to um, to because I always because whenever I teach I teach accent and stuff, I always make my students go like, what is an accent and what is a dialect? Mm -hmm. Um, we talk about dialect being more about words and accent being more about sound, but those two overlap so much, so that there are certain words that I have. Um, I have, you know, a certain connection to, uh, a, a physical connection to that my mouth as like, like really likes to say mm. those words. Um, and it, like, if I'm tired to, not if I'm tired, well, if I'm tired, if I'm really angry that like, <laughs> I, 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 you can't see it. Your little <laughs> yeah. My little, um, and I roll my eyes, which is a very New York thing to do. It's also a very, like it's characteristic of like African American states as well, but it's also found in African languages as well. On that mm. sound, yes. or that, yeah. right? Uh, uh, but it only goes with certain words for me. So the sound, ah. yeah, the sound and the words are quite linked for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I always tell, like, and it's a cool acting thing too, to kind of like, you know, all those little like behavioral things that you can like yeah. look at. And, and the paralinguistics, I think, are really important. It occurred to me today. Again, listening to another podcast because I do very little else. <laughs> let's be honest. Um, of in the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a brilliant, brilliant journalistic, um, investigative journalism um, podcast about crime, basically, but things that have gone wrong in the American um, justice system. Right. And there are a lot of those. There are quite a few. And um, there was one where they were talking about uh, a guy called Curtis Flowers, mm. who um, is still under police. Um, custody and all sorts of awful things going on with that but they were talking they were interviewing his mother mm -hmm. and his mother would would say um i don't go and see uh see curtis mm -hmm. <laughs> and every I time think of that. every time she said something she said i i don't i i, I hadn't gone this way mm -hmm. and jesus said this mm -hmm. and every single time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And every time there was like a comment on the, on the phrase that she just said, which told you how she felt about what she said. Yeah. Like it wasn't in what she said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was like, I, I don't feel well today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, you really don't feel well, do you? But it's, but the way that she said the words and used the positive, what she was saying was very sort of straightforward. And then you understood what she meant and how yeah. she felt by her little mm -hmm mm -hmm. afterwards. No, I'm doing it. Yeah, it's <laughs> lovely. I was just like, that's a brilliant, yeah. beautiful, really authentic character choice. Yeah. In a theatrical environment, but this woman d does, it, sadly she passed away, but is, is doing it in yeah. real life. Yeah. Um, and there are sort of these things that just sort of leap out at you. And yeah. Which are really specific to a culture as well. Yeah, basically. and they're... And, um, and they're habitual. They're part of you. There's mm. there's something that you don't even think about doing. It's just like, it, it's like breathing. It's it and, and it's the only way that you can really think about expressing that mm. is, is through that. So I can, we have to do a whole other thing on that. We do that, have to do a whole other thing. Because that, that is a whole other thing. Um, do you want to talk about um, MLE for for a bit? Yeah. Because I actually just found out about MLE like, really? <laughs> like a couple of months ago. Oh, really? I, well, yeah. I'm in the midst of doing a breakdown. A proper like. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a proper breakdown for it. Um, guys, if you want it when I've finished it, you can. 
can message me enough. Um, <laughs> um, because I'm going to do, there are probably at l there are probably about six different versions of MLE that I've identified so mm -hmm. far. So MLE stands for Multicultural London English. <laughs> and MLE is the predominant, lang predominant language, the predominant accent that we hear yeah. in London yeah. now. Um, and it is in every corner of the, of the capital. It's not even like it's a specific area. It's everywhere. And it's, um, it's overtaken that sort of Cockney London sound. Right. It's completely not what we hear anymore. Right. Ex except for in really small pockets and in certain pubs in certain areas. Um, and it's, it seems to be non it started in a in a from a from two particular cultures mm -hmm. uh, or sets of cultures and then and then it and then it sort of has just become everything Every, mm -hmm. everybody speaks like that so there are influences of african languages and there are influences of um south indian subcontinent well there's indian subcontinent sounds mm -hmm. so whether that's india or pakistan or um any of those surrounding areas there. Um, and so those kind of, those languages, um, so a North West London, Hounslow kind of, Harrow sort of, Neasden area, they, they have a larger um, Asian community. Mm -hmm. um, so Indian and Pakistani community and Bangladeshi community as well. Um, and then if you go to Croydon, or not quite as far as Croydon, but maybe Brixton. Mm -hmm. If you go to Brixton, they don't have the they don't have as many uh, people from the Indian subcontinent. They have more people from the African continent, right. and in any number of different countries, uh, you know, arguably all countries from Africa, mm -hmm. um, and people are in London. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is we get the we get this sort of London urban sound mixed with the um, the predominant influence of a language that is spoken at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we get a mix of London with Yoruba, London with Urdu, mm. London with something else. And it's yeah. like, you can go on and on with Punjabi and you can go on and on and on. Um, Moza, uh, all sorts of well, different languages, right? Yeah. So there's like loads and loads of stuff. And Somali, I love the Somali m &A, it's brilliant. But there's lots of these different influences and what's really interesting is that then you get this north-south divide in London. Mm -hmm. So in London we've got this north, northern Cockney sort of sound which is, um, which is quite sort of major in its cadence. It's sort of like, hello, how are you? What are you doing? We're really nice. And then in South London it's minor, so you get this minor cadence, like the vowel doesn't really shift that much. But you get a sort of minor cadence. Mm. It's a bit sort of like, just sort of sounds a bit like that. So you get this these sort of north south differences, but then you get these cultural differences as well. Mm -hmm. And so then also what happens is you get people who are Caucasian mm -hmm. and sometimes like not just Caucasian but like Irish and Scottish uh, backgrounds. So like super Caucasian. It's like super, super Caucasian. <laughs> Like translucent. Um, it's like hyper Translucent right. um, But they, that they, they also have these that has this have this accent. Mm -hmm. Not because Irish is an influence on their accent, or you know Scots Gaelic or whatever. Yeah. Or but it, predominantly it's because um, those are the people they hang around. The people they hang around with because they go to inner city schools. Everything's mm -hmm. multicultural, so that's who they speak to. So when they're speaking to their friends, that's mm -hmm. how they speak. Yeah. So, should I do some MLA? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if I were to do, um, uh, like, if I were to do, like, North London, yeah, and make it from an African background, yeah? Yeah. Like, a lot of it is going to be, like, rounder sounds, yeah? It's going to be darker, it's going to be rounder. You're going to have, like, this, oh, 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 darker sounds, yeah? Whereas if you were to do like, if I were to make it like a little bit like shorter and like retroflex my tongue a little bit, like it becomes Bangladeshi, but it's also like MLE yeah. at the same time. So it's like you get a different influence. So you get like different rather than different. 
So like just the placement of the D, D. gives you like a completely different sound. Yeah. So you've got like this one, yeah, where it's like quite a major, and then you've got like a minor one where it's like more like a South London, you get like a more of like a South London sound, yeah? yeah. And and the same with African, it's like more, with African influenced sounds. Yeah. So you get this like huge variation within yeah. London and then you get something that's a bit more like it's, yeah, it's like a bit more cockney yeah? yeah so you've got like this one yeah where it's kind of a bit more so you kind of go well who's this person yeah it's probably a white kid who lives with lo within like Seven Kings, Ilford yeah like East London this is a lot of yeah a lot of yeah every time yeah you just say yeah <laughs> it's really it's useful yeah so you say that but then it's like it's quite bright it's quite like fun so it's kind of all right yeah like it's kind of you know you know you say nothing you don't say anything at all really you just talk yeah <laughs> and so what happens is you get this kind of like light brightness and you don't get this retroflexive tongue so mm -hmm. you go well you're a, probably a caucasian person speaking mm -hmm. mle mm -hmm. but the social social con social kind of context of your language speaking yeah is within an asian predominantly asian group of friends right so then you get so you kind of you get these other variants of it so according to sort of how english they are or how sort of that british is, they are you know, versus how kind of other culturally influenced they are yeah and that's like that's so interesting because um when um back in the day when eminem came up eminem uh, <laughs> <laughs> came up back in the Back in the 90s, early 2000s. I'm, I'm taking you back. <laughs> um, Please stand up. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, there, um, but people, were, people were really commenting on the fact that he speaks AAE, um, mm. and, but that it was quite, uh, everyone always thought of it as being something that was racially unique to African Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not necessarily the case either. You can be from any ethnicity and speak it, it's just that the majority of people who do speak it and the majority of people who originated it were African American. Mm. And I think it's really cool that in multicultural London English, I had a look. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm dead by London. Um, that you that you do have you, you do have this coming together of mm. of different sounds, different ethnicities, different um, different regions, and all of that. Um, but that it's not necessarily it's not necessarily specific to um, an ethnicity or, or a race, mm. um, but more of a region rather than, rather than, you know, like, a yeah. race or, I mean, there are influences from those particular things. Yeah, and, and if you, if I were to really, which I might do, uh, wander around London recording people. Um, oh my God, yeah. I'm not sure why not. But like, if I were to do that, there would be certain places where people would speak Punjabi versus speaking Urdu, mm -hmm. and the difference between those two languages would have some kind of resonance in the way that the language was being spoken, or the in the way that English was being spoken in an MLE. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, you could refine it even more. Mm -hmm. um, and because I don't speak like that mm -hmm. um, habitually, uh, but I grew up in an area where that is spoken. Mm -hmm. And I live in a different area, but say it's still an area where that is spoken. Mm -hmm. um, you do hear variations, but I'm not, at the moment, I'm not entirely aware of all of them. Yeah. And my South, South London, <laughs> my South London Indian subcontinent influence, <laughs> MLE, not great right now, <laughs> but it's, it'll get there, it's fine. Yeah. But what's really interesting is that I, uh, when I work with students, especially if they're from South London, mm -hmm. um, and I say, to, and they say to me, oh, that's MLE, which happened the other day. And I said, mm. well, it's not, that's not MLE, that's just a London sound. But if I were to do MLE, you can tell whether I'm, you can tell whether the character that I'm playing mm -hmm. is Caucasian, Indian, or sort of Asian, or black, African. Mm -hmm. You can tell mm -hmm. from the use of the language and the and the key identifiers mm -hmm. um, wh who those people are. Yeah. So when I do it in the room, I often have people like losing their minds, going, "That sounds like my mum's friends, no. whatever." And you kind of go, "Okay, that's good because that means it's a it's a bona fide accent. Yeah. Like, it's actually like <laughs> I'm a doing real, it right. I'm <laughs> that's doing what that it means. right. Yeah. Which is wonderful. It's really interesting. Uh, and it is one of those things that will keep growing. And it's quite interesting. People keep talking about, you know, 
language is being ruined by such and such a thing or not or it's being you know eroded by death <laughs> yeah which is yeah. An, a generational thing that every generation says yeah you're ruining it for everybody else and it's yeah. just not true um but that also that we're we're starting to find this sort of homogenized um multicultural sound yeah which is quite exciting yeah in a way because then it it might just start, that might be the thing that erodes the class system in the UK. It might be, it probably won't be, but it could be. Um, we did, we just solved the class system in the UK. We just, we just solved, <laughs> solved like class we just, um, we just solved um, social injustice in the UK. Um, but I think, you know, <laughs> but, um, and uh, because I always tell my students this, because somebody asked me, um, I think a year ago, um, how do you tell class differences in America if it's mm. not by accent? Mm. Um, and I was like, and be, and what's really interesting is that I was in the room with another um, uh, American at the time, um, and she was, uh, and I was adamant uh, in saying that there is a difference in in an accent, it's a subtle thing, mm. but that it is kind of there. And she was adamant in saying that it wasn't, mm. um, but it was. Also, but it's also added, um, but it's also noted in in race as well. Mm. So I mean, I think there's lots and lots of layers to it because mm. classes is just uh, classes associated with so many other things. Um, but it is kind of cool that we that to look, um, to look and see that you can't really really tell a person's class in America just by their accent. You kind of need a little bit more context. There are different, like, if you went to, and, and this kind of varies from state to state. Um, uh, so I'm not from, I'm not from Nebraska, so I would have no idea, if I just talked to a person from Nebraska, I would have no idea what class they were, but somebody from Nebraska probably would. They, they, pro they yeah. would probably know that. Um, but in the same way that if I spoke to somebody at a similar distance from, that Nebraska is from New York, yeah. from London. Yeah. I wouldn't know what class they were necessarily. Yeah. Also, they would definitely be speaking a different language. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that also, they would yes. be speaking Spanish, they, German, Czech, I don't know, like yeah, Finnish. Like they would English. be speaking something that is not English and yeah. I'd be like, interesting. Because there yeah. is, even though it's the same language, it's still like, there is such a distance between the, between you that the, 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 the context of that. Yeah where they sit in society in a hierarchy or whatever you want to call it and what's really really interesting about that is that i was um uh, i was talking to a student who is um georgian um and she was talking about when she found out that there are different accents within georgian um and she was like i had no idea up until you know a certain age mm. and i think a lot of people have that like i don't really you don't until you leave you don't really really know do you like you don't really know about code switching until you have to do it. Mm. Um, like you know that it's done, but you don't really know that you do it and that other people also do it and engage in it. And I think it's the same thing about accents. Like you don't really know that there is an accent for a particular group of people. I mean, I always tell people, I was like, if there is a thing, there is an accent for it. <laughs> like, if there are people doing yeah. it, then there is an accent for it. And there's probably language that goes with that as well. Mm. Like, um, but you don't necessarily know until you kind of leave that, that, that bubble and you go, oh wait, that's completely different. For me, like I had no idea until I came to the UK, how many and how ingrained <laughs> and how deep it goes. And people have are super super passionate about it. They're mm. very attached to their accent because it it um, it signals that you are something that you belong to this or you belong to that, and um, and that's very powerful for people. Where um, I'm not to say that Americans don't have this, but I. I mean, I, I don't feel as attached to my accent um, as, you know, a, a definitely not as a Londoner would. I feel like there's mm. there's that sense of, like, I talk um, the way I talk because of where I'm from. And yeah. I'm proud of that. Mm. As you all should be. Everyone should be. <laughs> Everyone should be. Sure. This is law. <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is Andrea's law. <laughs> this is it. So... Code switching, code switching, changing the language and the use of your accent a little bit. Yeah. Um, but generally changing the the use of your language mm -hmm. according to environment, really, right? Environment, yeah, yeah. Environment need, 
Yeah, I would say environment is a good word for that. Um, and if in the case of acting, I guess it would be it would be a choice. It would be a choice. <laughs> it would be a choice. Yeah. And sometimes the the instigator for the code switching comes from the text. Yes. And sometimes it comes not from the text but from the actor. Yeah. Um, in discussion with your director, as I often say mm -hmm. to my undergraduates, um, <laughs> don't make the decision yourself. Have a discussion. Yeah. Um, but that's really important that there that, that it doesn't necessarily have to be in the text for you to do it. You can make a character choice. Yeah. That is relevant. That has. Yeah. That, that there is a code switch there, which tells us something about that person. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be very um, obvious. It can be very nuanced and very subtle. And then you can really say something about that character outside of just the words that are said about that character or the things that you say about other people, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So... Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's um I always I always use code switching when I'm when I go in and, and teach RP or when I go in and teach um American because I fundamentally do not believe that you need to change your accent in order to get a job. I think that you can have an option of being able to do another accent mm. and have that choice if you would like to get a particular job. Um, but I don't believe that you need to have this accent in order to be a great actor. Mm. It's, I mean, I mean, and as in like your primary accent, like yeah. I need to always have an RP accent in order to work. I just, and I'm an American, so I'm, I'm quite outside of the whole. I think it used to be the case field. maybe several decades ago that you had to have RP. Yeah. Otherwise you just, there was no chance. Yeah. But now I don't think it's. Choices! As relevant, but choices. <laughs> choices! Choices! Andrew, what did you learn this episode? Um, oh, I learned, uh, I learned that... <laughs> bagels and not bagels. I did learn about bagels you and not already. bagels. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, but I learned that sound... Uh, and the way, not just the way that you speak, um, but the sounds that you make as you speak are deeply personal. Mm. Um, and that if you change the way that you sound, sometimes you can feel as though you're changing a bit of yourself. Mm, wow. See, now he's thinking about how to top that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, lovely. Exciting. What did you learn, Leo? What did I learn? I learned that my South London MLE needs some work, uh, when it is Indian or South, South, uh, subcontinent Indian. Uh, influenced. And your grandma's from Virginia. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And I also thought that George's both a, both a state and a country, um, and then got confused. And then I realized it's an era as well. And then you were like, <laughs> she's Georgian. And I was like, F from the Georgian era? And then my brain <laughs> was like, not really paying attention at that point. Because I was like, how, how old would she be now? <laughs> I know, I was literally like, so she would speak RP. I don't know. <laughs> Like I went off, my brain went off on a tangent. I should have said the country. Like, interesting. So she was from Russia. She was from Georgia. From Georgia, but the former Russian yes. Republic of yeah, Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like Katie Manua. Yes. Yeah, sure. There are 10,000 bicycles in Beijing. She says that's a fact, but I don't think it's true. Um, but yeah, that code switching is so important for all of us. And that we all do it. Yeah. What's, I think that's really interesting is that everybody does it. And until you identify it, everyone's like, mm, I think you'll find it's just for these people. And you're mm. like, uh, I think you'll find it's not. I think you'll find it's for everybody. Mm. We all code switch all of the time. And when you don't code switch, it makes it uncomfortable. It makes it awkward in situations. Yeah. Or if you code switch in the wrong situation. That will also make it that very will awkward. also make it really awkward. I have done, I've done that. <laughs> Oh, me too. I have done that. But I think that's just part of being, firstly, a person. Mm. Secondly, a person who's interested in language. Yeah. And accents. And accents. And. I got myself into a lot of trouble trying to do people's accents. Yeah. So it's a, it's a slippery slope. Because I it was, is so personal. 
Yeah, and I was talking to some South Africans the other day and I was like, just launched into my finest Johannesburg. And they were like, that's really good. And I was like, <laughs> I know, thanks. See, that's nice. Because some people are like, like, stop. So, like, it's yeah. really good. Some like, people are ah. like, um, no. <laughs> Dumb. No. I, I do have a friend who is from Johannesburg who lives like two minutes away. Um, so I, we do spend quite a bit of time together. So I'm used to doing this accent. Yeah. Plus he lets me, so. Yeah, see, you need permission. Yeah. Get permission first. Get permission to code say. switch. <laughs> no, just code no, switch. No, to get permission to do someone else's accent. Code switch whenever you want. Yeah. If you want to contact us about anything we said in the podcast, you can reach us on Twitter at can you hear pod or on Instagram at can you hear me podcast or you can search for us on Facebook and on YouTube or email us at can you hear me at the back at gmail.com you can find me Leon on Twitter at Leon Trayman or me Andrea at Andrea Fudge on Twitter please support the podcast by subscribing as a patron on our Patreon site the link is in the show notes to keep the podcast advertisement free as well as get access to cool extra stuff discounts bonus episodes as well as supporting ongoing voice research funding as well okay love you bye